All right, moving right along to S30, draft 1.1, 1 .1, page one of three, um, Adam. Eric, do you want to post the, the bill? Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> or draft 1.1 1 .1 of S30. There we go. You also have written testimony in our uh, from uh, Chris Bad, Chris, Chris Bradley. Uh, the, uh, on the web page. So, uh, Eric Fitzpatrick with the Office of Legislative Counsel again here to. Uh, now look at S30, which is the, uh, the uh, committee strike call. So again, this is version 1.1 because it's the first committee amendment. Uh, you'll see that the, the only change here between this and the, the, the previous version that we looked at, I'll get to in a moment, but I'm just bringing it up first because it's actually related to lines three and four see that the bill as introduced was titled an act relating to prohibiting possession of firearms at child care facilities, hospitals, and certain public buildings. I know this wasn't something that came up in committee discussion, but I noticed it as I was redoing the amendment that you may want to change the title. Obviously, that's up to you. You don't have to. Uh, but given that the bill now is um, limited to hospital buildings, you may, I put that language in there to um, to change the title in case you decide you want to do that. But I could certainly I think, take it out I, if you don't. I think it's a good idea to change the title. Absolutely. Any okay, disagreement? Great. I think the committee is unanimous on that one. <laughs> Sounds good. Uh, so the language of the, the substance of the amendment is, as we discussed before, it prohibits knowingly possess, knowing possession of a firearm while within a hospital building. That's lines 10 to 11. Again, modeled on the, uh, the prohibition in schools within a school building. It says within a hospital building. It's a one-year misdemeanor, $1,000 fine. Same language, providing the exemption or exception for law enforcement officers. Um, the notice provision requiring the posting of the signs, that's uh, virtually identical to the language in uh, courthouse prohibition. Eric? Eric? Yes. I think sorry, Alice might have had a question. Oh, sorry. I was just wondering, uh, going back to where you said hospital building, if I understand it from the definition, is this correct? It would include like any kind of a building affiliated with the hospital. In other words, doctor's offices half a block away or anything like that who's part of the hospital. Is as, that long as, it, as long as it's part of the hospital, yes. When you say, but what do you mean when you say part of the hospital, the physical plant, or does it include all those other office locations for doctors who are part of the hospital staff? You know, I think, what, what, when I say part of the hospital, I mean the the licensed entity. So, uh, if that licensed entity includes those buildings, I would read it as probably coming under the provision. Yes, but uh, it has to qualify as the licensed hospital. Uh, and if that's the case, it's one of their buildings. I think that's what's covered. Okay. So does a doctor who is a hospital employee, I mean, a full-fledged employee, not somebody just has privileges there, um, has an office, does it include his office or her office? I, I don't know the answer to that, Sarah Nico. I, I wouldn't think so. I, I mean, if you take... Um... The, the hospital is licensed, and then you could have people working remotely um, who are employees. If they're working off site, they're not working at the hospital. Um, so I take hospital building to mean the, the physical plant that is licensed. It, it, this goes back to what's the definition of a hospital. And right. We discussed that earlier. Um, but uh, and I asked the question because 
the orthopedic division of the Southwest Vermont Medical Center is located actually in a different, completely different building on a different street than the um, hospital, even though they're, you know, it's off the same, it's in the same vicinity. So that's the question became is, and I believe the answer was no, that that um, orthopedic area was not because they don't perform surgery there. Um, hmm. Thought that was the definition. I'll have to look back on my records. Um, on the definition, I think it all revolves around the definition of the hospital. And, um, so could, we could looked it, at this earlier. I know um, it wasn't really clear. I didn't think it is. Well, and Eric, the definition that's right there, uh, Eric, does that give any clue to? We can pull it up and take a look. How expansive it is. Now remember the definition is in the licensing statute. So this is all hospitals that have to be licensed. So if you call, if you come under this definition, then um, see it's in the licensing of hospitals chapter. And you'll see it right there in subdivision one. Place devoted primarily to the maintenance and operation of diagnostic and therapeutic facilities for inpatient medical or surgical care of individuals. Okay, so I mean, we, we had a discussion about inpatient, and for I think the person on the street, inpatient certainly means in the hospital. But because if you go for surgery and you have it done in the office, that's called outpatient surgery. So I guess it's number one that we would be yeah. going by. Okay. Does that give a good answer, Senator Nika? Um, primarily. I, I, I hope it does. <laughs> Thanks. Sure. Uh, let's see, where were we? Um, oh, we were on the notice provisions as well. So again, that's uh, that was a discussion of who's covered by this, which is the uh, uh, tracks back to the definition of a hospital. Um, and again, it's the prohibition is on knowingly possession of a knowing possession of a firearm while within the hospital building. Hospitals required to post conspicuously at each public entrance notice of these provisions. In other words, notice that possessing a firearm there is uh, illegal. And that's the end of that piece, the hospital piece. Uh, currently the Capitol complex study is still in here. This was the um, uh, study by the Capitol complex security advisory committee and you'll see that it's been changed to firearms. So remember, originally, it, or previously anyway, it was a report weapons. on weapons in the Capitol complex and the committee wanted to change the weapons to firearms. So the requirement is that the study committee, the, sorry, the oversight committee, um, the advisory committee report to the Just, Justice Oversight Committee uh, by December 1st. See, that date was changed as well. It was December 15th originally um, to provide time in case there's legislation to meet the uh, introduction deadlines next year. And the report talk is required to talk about how possession of firearms, the capital complex is regulated, past situations into which people have possessed firearms, have those, those have been handled and make any recommendations if they have any, uh, if there should be legislation to address the, the issue. And then lastly, you see the effective date as well as the changing of the title to an act relating to prohibiting possession of firearms within public building, within hospital buildings, sorry. I think that's it, yep. Mr. Chair. Yes. I just wanted to um, 
since I don't think it got posted on the website, I just wanted to mention that we had all of us an email from Stephanie Winters, and it was on behalf of Vermont Medical Society, um, Physician Leadership, American Academy of Pediatrics, American College of Surgeons, Vermont Academy of Family Physicians, Vermont Ophthalmological Society, Vermont Orthopedic Society, Vermont Psychiatric Association, Vermont Society of Anesthesiologists, and Vermont Association of Osteopathic Physicians and Surgeons. That's from the letters from all of their executive directors in support of this provision, the hospital provision. Thank you. It is on the website as well. Okay, thank you, Peggy. I haven't seen that on the website, but thanks for um, so. I have one, a, a one question. In the um, bill, Eric, uh, in the uh, schools, um, it says no person shall knowingly possess a firearm or a dangerous weapon while within a school building or on a school bus. And then B, no person shall knowingly possess a firearm or dangerous deadly weapon on any school property with intent to injure another person. Does that mean that you can possess a firearm on school property as long as you don't intend to injure another person? Or does it mean that, um, is it with, so are there two separate provisions there? I, yes. I can actually speak Yes, and that. it's exactly as you said, Senator Sears. Um, and you may recall, I wasn't here when the school statute was first passed, but I have been involved in some of the amendments over the years. And that provision, I remember, um, is intended to exactly permit that. So that, for example, if someone is, I remember the discussion in committee, if someone is, you know, driving up to pick up their child at high school and they happen to have a hunting rifle in the car, but they didn't bring it into the building, you did not want that to be illegal. So the possession, as long as you not have it with the intent to uh, injure anybody, you can still have it on school property as long as you don't bring it into the building. So and, uh, this oh. bill is, so one might say that this bill is consistent with the school, with the school building in that um, the standard is knowingly, am I correct? Correct, yes. Senator Sears? Yes. Um, I was on education, I believe, for that debate of the second part. And another piece was that um, some school properties in rural areas, people hunt in large wooded areas and they were worried that they might stray onto um, what was technically school property. And so again, the idea was in school buildings, um, it was knowingly, and then there's an additional for the, for the, the grounds of school buildings with the intent um, piece. So that was also designed to um, have people not be caught up in the net if they were, um, if they were, had their hunting rifles with them um, outside. Okay. Other comments, questions? I guess we can take the um, the bill down. Um, oh. There's only four of us. And what's new with Norton Protection? My protection's been updated. Okay. That's all I can see right now, unfortunately. Not you, but my Norton Protection's been updated. I'm really thrilled about it, but as soon as I, oh, there, I'm getting back to you now that my Norton Security's updated. I know you're all happy for me. Um, so here we are.
So uh, our discussion yesterday, I, I thought people kind of expressed where they were on the bill with the exception of mm -hmm. Senator Nicka. Um, so I, I think in some ways that, that's the, the missing data point is um, Senator Nicka, how you, how you are looking at the bill now. I'm thinking about it and thinking about it and weighing all the parts. I do think that um, I actually like the trespass piece that is in place now. I think it, it, um, it works. Um, I think that someone bent on terrible destruction will come into the hospital if they want to, no matter what, unless there's like, you know, screening devices at the door. Um, I know that um, there are many people who are absolutely very, very scared. Many of them expressing to me that they're afraid of many of the people who come into in the hospital emergency rooms. Uh, the persons who come in, some are dealing with um, severe mental illness and the staff there have felt they've been dangerous uh, to have in the emergency room and are afraid of some of them. And I think those for those persons, um, and, in, and indeed there are many people very stressed out right now due to COVID, lack of services that they might normally be receiving and have been arriving at the emergency room. So anyway, I've, I've been looking at both ends of this. I think there certainly are issues that I don't like in it and there are other issues that I know fe people feel they need. So I'm basing my vote on that. We'll see when I vote. <laughs> well, I, I, it's... I guess... So if you had a tie vote, um, it's, it doesn't pass out. Of, it doesn't pass. Is that correct, Senator Sears? That would be correct. Um, just because Senator White's not here. Yes. I can wait till Tuesday. Well, I, I, I didn't think. But that I, endangers the sense the bill doesn't have to go to some other committee. Uh, right. So in the. It would not pass. It would not make crossover. Right. Um, so, so in, in the event there is a tie, uh -uh. I'm, uh, the bill could still go to the floor with the tie vote or even a no vote. Do you have a thought? I, I think, Peggy, could you see if um, Secretary Bloomer is available? I, I think I can answer that because I spoke with the secretary um, okay. yesterday. Um, you, you need... Uh, a positive vote to have the bill go out of committee. That that could be a positive vote to report it unfavorably. So in other words, the reason why I ask Alice is if, if you can support the bill, then it would be three one and it would move um, for the Senate to debate. And if um, it was, uh, well, if Senator White were here and it was two, three, I, I honestly, I would make a motion to report it unfavorably and then ask that the people who oppose it vote yes on that, which would take it to the floor with an unfavorable recommendation. Yes, I understand all that. Okay. Well, I'm worried about what happens to a bill that comes out unfavorably on the floor. Um, I, I, I'm uncomfortable with that, not knowing where folks are at, where folks are ha at. Um, it's really, um, the last time I had an, an unfavorable vote was a casino. Um, came out of General Affairs Committee or the General Economic Development and General Affairs Committee negatively because Howard Dean wanted to make sure it was dead. It wasn't very, it's not a good policy. I, you know, I don't know what the, what the Senate would do with the bill if it comes out unfavorably. You mean the body itself? Yeah. I think, we've, I, think I recall one being there previously that well, maybe it wound up uh, being sent back to committee, but they certainly have been out there before. Yeah, well, 
but uh, that, that doesn't mean anything in terms of what I'm going to do. But. No, I understand. I'm just saying I'm, I'm not sure I want to vote on favorable. Mm -hmm. Does that leave it open to all kinds of amendments? To all kinds of commitments? Amendments. Oh, amendments. I, I, I can't speak for any other senator, but I will say that I've, I've had discussions broadly in the Senate and I believe the support is there for the strike all. And I believe that there's the will to have it move through on amended. Because if there are amendments that are substantive, I will vote against the bill. Yeah. And I, I will repeat, I support the strike all and would not, um, you know, be supportive of amendments. So I would like to say that I appreciate um, the changes that have been made to the bill with regard to its limitations now and putting in knowingly, which is certainly vital, I think, to the bill and the well-being of people of the state. Alice, can I, can I, um, I, I don't know how you'll receive this. I, I mean it in a- I've already made up my mind how I'm going to vote. Oh, okay. Well, let's um, I, hear from you if this chair wants. Yeah, sure. Uh, I, I was just wondering, and again, it's difficult because you haven't <laughs> expressed which way you're leaning, um, but I, I believe this is a issue that should be discussed by the Senate. So my, my primary um, thought is that um, it would be it would be best to have it somehow come before the Senate. Um, if, if you were to vote the bill out of committee, you could certainly then vote however you pleased on the bill on the floor. Um, and, and one possibility might be to make that clear that you were voting it out of committee without commitment about a, about a later vote um, to allow the Senate to take it up. Yes, I'm, I'm aware of that. Thanks. Sorry, I. No, that's all right. It's a good reminder. So. Is there a motion to do something? Well, I, I have two motions, but I, I. Well. It's, it's difficult if I don't if I don't know where people are, um, on on the issue. So. Well, if the first motion fails, you can always make another motion. I will. Um, if the first motion fails, where it is tied, which is failure, um, then I will ask for the secretary to come down and talk to us. I did reach out to Secretary Bloomer. I have not heard back. Okay. Peggy, did you set contact him by email? Email, and then I did try and do a, um, a like an automatic invite. Um, is there? I'm gonna. Way? I'm gonna call. I'm gonna call him on his cell right now. Okay, great. Thank you, Eric. Yeah, you might want to mute yourself when you call. <laughs> Thank mm -hmm. you, Senator Bruce. Do you have an amount, uh, motion? I do. I would. I would ask that the committee move the bill favorably, um, as amended. Actually, I think we should probably move the amendment first. Oh. I, then I would vote uh, to amend as per the committee amendment offered by Eric Fitzpatrick just now. The motion is to is to amend S30 as seen in the amendment that we just dealt with, which mm -hmm. would amend it so that you wouldn't have the government buildings and and um, child care any longer in the bill. That would be titled it. Just for technical clarification, I don't think you can address the amendment as from Eric Fitzpatrick. Oh, I, I, what I meant was the one we just made the amendment. Eric Fitzpatrick. The committee amendment, draft. Draft 1.1 of S30 dated 3-11-2021, 1.55 p.m. Is there any further discussion? 
not. Peggy, could you please call the roll? Do you need a second? No, not to amend the bill. Oh, not to amend it. Okay. Um, Senator Benning. No. Senator Nicka. Yes. Senator Ruth. Yes. Senator Sears. Yes. We, we have now amended the bill. The next motion would be to report favorably S30 as amended. So moved. Senator Baruth has moved that we report favorably S30 as amended. Ready for the vote? Yep. I, unless there's any discussion. Hearing none, Peggy, would you please call the roll? Senator Denning. No. Senator Nicka. Yes. Senator Baruth. Yes. Senator Sears. Yes. Motion carries three, one, one. I would like to say, I'm sorry that um, Senator White was not able to, is out sick and was not able to be here to vote. She participated very actively throughout the presentation of this in our committee. All right, um, I'm gonna take a- um, Who's reporting, who is reporting the bill? Oh, um, not me. Uh, Senator Baruth, would you like to? I would like to report the bill. Okay. Senator um, Baruth, report the bill. And same thing, Eric, I'll wait for you for the edited version. Okay, what time, were, Peggy, what time were we scheduled to have Michelle? I know she was somewhere else. Um, actually, not till 1030. All right. Um, if, she, if she's available, we'll try to get back at 1020, if she's available at 1020. Okay. I'll email her and, let, and email you guys. Yep, that'll be a 15 minute break. Eric, thank you so much for all three bills today. Um, I don't know, thank you, Eric. I don't know yep, what it means, but very, as always, very professional, very well done. Appreciate it. Thank you, Senator Hughes. I appreciate and, it. And by the and while the last vote, you know, was not unanimous, um, obviously, I want to do my own thanks to the committee on S3. On S3. Uh, that's a really important bill. Uh, hopefully we can get the house to the order um, and uh, provide um, help for public safety. We'll see you all at 1020. Very good.